So the big thing on the internet nowadays is that, uh, you know, Alex Jones and all the rest of the right-wing conspiracy or the conspiracy people out there are all concerned that we're about to go, uh, that, that, that we're at war. We're going to, you know, we're, we've got a World War III situation going on. In which case, i got to say, well, okay, yeah, that sounds cool to me. Because, you know, I mean, humanity is just so goddamn stupid. I mean, is it me? Is it me? I mean, goddamn, are people fucking stupid. You know, you just, you, you hit them with facts and figures, and they still want to stick with their own idiotic bullshit. It's really enough, you know, and after a while, you're just like, World War III? Uh, nuclear war? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know? I mean, you got your liberals, your New York liberals, and your, and your fucking San Francisco liberals, which I, can, I call them San Francisco bigots. You know what a San Francisco bigot is? As soon as they hear somebody have a southern accent, they throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, and, and the, these intellectual elites, these Ivy League motherfuckers, I got no patience for them. Fuck them. You know what I mean? Let's talk for a minute about, about human exploitation. This is how exploit, you know, they call it human resources. You can exploit other resources in the world, gold, silver, oil, stuff like that, or you can exploit people. And this is, you know, I mean, the most exploited resource in the world are human beings. And this is how it works. You have people because of their position, who are able to make the sale, who are able to actually trade and get paid for ideas. These people are people with degrees. Somebody who has an advanced degree, a degree from Harvard, you know, an Ivy League school or something like that, they're able to, they're allowed to trade in ideas. So let's say you have someone, some motherfucker, who has an Ivy League degree, a PhD or whatever, who is allowed to trade in ideas, but oh, unfortunately they don't have any. So what do they do? They find some poor motherfucker who's really smart, who doesn't have an advanced degree, and they figure out a way to steal their ideas, because they are in a position where they can they can um, where they can broker the ideas. They can sell the ideas because of their position. And if you don't have that position, you can you can you know you know stomp and shoot and spit. Nobody's going to buy your fucking shit because you don't have the position. And that's how it works. So you know human exploitation. This is what prison is for. People go to prison, and all of a sudden you can't you know there's certain shit you just can't fucking do anymore. You need somebody who has, doesn't have a criminal record or who has the social position to where that they can, you know, they can wheel and deal because you can't, you know. And this is the the, the resentment you see between billionaires and uh, intellectual elites and Ivy League elites. There's a schism there because the the billionaires they don't have the piece of paper that says that they, you know, that allows them to trade and that allows them to frolic in the landscape that the Ivy League intellectual, you know, advanced degree motherfuckers are able to frolic in. And they resent the hell out of that. And it doesn't matter how much money they have. You can be a billionaire. You can be a fucking billionaire. And still, you can't frolic in the same playgrounds that a motherfucker who's got a PhD from Harvard or Oxford or someplace like that can frolic. And it, and it pisses them off. They don't like it. And then so they, they, they how they make up for that is that they, uh, they use their, you know, their, their, their money is power. So they flex that muscle. You know, out of, pretty much out of resentment. So you're, you know, you're, you're Ivy League intellectual. Um, your Ivy League intellectuals are, you know, uh, they're, they derive their power. And that's a power trip, too, in and of itself. You know, I mean, if you teach to the teachers, man, what a power trip that is. I'll tell you, you know, another, okay, before I get on to that. Uh, but they all exploit, I mean, PhDs, they, they exploit postdocs and, you know, graduate students and, and, uh, you know, undergrads and stuff like that. You know, th to get your PhD, I guarantee you, to get your PhD, you're going to have to suck somebody's dick or whack somebody's car or clean their pool at the very fucking least. I'm telling you. You will. You think I'm bullshitting, but it's really true. Because it's all about human exploitation. And they, they exploit the shit. And they will exploit the shit out of you. No kidding. Real, real fucking beings I'm talking about. So human exploitation, it's everywhere. When I got out of prison, did some time in prison, can you believe that? A guy in a green mask. Just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. Um, when I got out of prison, um, I spent eight and a half years in prison for a homicide. Right? It was involuntary manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter is actually considered not, not a violent offense. I can't talk too much about that because you know uh, it's unseemly. It's not. You know what I mean? That's like not a fucking. That's not. A, that's not really a. That's not a selling point. You know, I'm not, I'm not okay with it. I'm not. I don't want to promote. I don't want to promote that. But it's just as a matter of, you know, uh, to as a matter of evidence in what I'm saying to support what I'm saying. So I get out of prison, and um, I go to a, start going to a 12-step meeting, 12-step uh, meetings, and, and what do I find there is people that are, uh, it, it, they're, they're all down with that. By the way, rape is, rape is, um, is a form of exploitation, just so you know. 
So exploit human exploitation is rape. It may not be sexual rape, but it's rape, nevertheless. And that's what our, you know, the whole world runs on exploitation. Anyway, so I get out of prison, I go to a 12-step meeting, and this is what happens. I get one guy who just basically hangs out around the meetings looking for people who are down on their luck, who need, who are desperate, who need money, so that he can take advantage of them. He can use them for free and cheap labor. And I sat there and watched this motherfucker do it. And I still see him around, you know? And the dude's a complete fucking asshole. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm sorry, man, but the dude's a fucking asshole. And he's been an asshole for years, and people put up with him, and they say that they love him, but, you know, they really don't, because he's a fucking asshole. The guy's a fucking asshole, man. It's like, dude, man, work the steps already. Let's watch that program. Dude, work the steps. Give us a fucking break, man. God damn. Jesus. So anyway, this is all this fucking dude is doing. And when I, you know, when I first get, and there he is, and he just needs help around his house. And he's just trying to get cheap labor around his house to, to fix shit, because he's too goddamn cheap to actually pay a, a contractor to come in and do the shit right. So fuck him. All right, and what happens after that? Oh, then I run into, there's a woman in there, and her husband who are in recovery. And it's good, there's a good opportunity to vent, because I can't really talk about this in the fellowship. I really can't. I can't talk about this shit in the fellowship. Because, uh, you know, it, you know, you just get no understanding about it. Okay. There's a lady and a guy and a, the guy and a husband and wife team in recovery there. The wife is like, I don't want to necessarily say that she's coming on to me, but she she pokes her chest out. She comes and she sits down, she pokes her chest out and shit. And I get the vibe that, you know, I like this lady. I mean, we're kind of vibing her. She's kind of like my type. Really, I mean, and I'm thinking, wow, you know, I mean, she's married. But I don't mess around with married women. I don't. I don't believe in it. You know, I've got, you know, I just, I can't get behind it. I you know what I mean? I can't get behind getting in a relationship with a woman when I don't have my shit together. That's another thing. So anyway, this freaking lady... It's kind of coming on to me, and I kind of like, you know, I don't really brush her off, but I just sort of let it, you know, I don't really pursue it and stuff like that. Well, that shit got weird. You know what I mean? Because she's got to like, you know, at, some, at one point along the line, I'm kind of like, you know, I see what she's doing. You know, she's using on an extramarital affairs or whatever it is that she's doing, you know. And I kind of like, you know, I kind of like, I saw this. In street parlance, I peeped this, right? And then all of a sudden I start getting weird, you know, vibes from people. Like she's going around telling them that I'm, you know what I mean, that I'm doing inappropriate stuff to cover her fucking tracks track coverers. So then there's this other fucking dude that I get involved with on a music tip, right? I'm helping, I was doing a sideman thing with this guy. Dude fucking, so everything's cool, you know, we're going around and we're playing a little bit here and there. Fucking dude goes on vacation. This dude in recovery, he's got like, supposedly has like 30 years clean or something like that. This motherfucker goes on vacation, right? And, um, this dude goes on vacation and, uh, he, um, when he comes back, he's different in a very specific kind of way, like, and I kind of smelled like this, kind of sort of like this alcohol kind of scent on him. But his personality was had changed a little bit. Like the bondage of self had kind of slipped in there a little bit, right? The bondage of self had kind of like, it kind of kind of slipped in there. Which is something that happens when you use, and you're a drug addict when you use, you know, there's three parts of the disease. There's the, the, the physical part, which is the compulsion. You got to keep using once you start. There's the mental part, which is the obsession. It means it haunts the mind. And then there's the spiritual part. Which is the total, which is the total self-centeredness. So, I, and when you relapse, you, these things peel off of you in reverse. Where you get relief, first three steps, one, two, three. You get physical relief, first mental relief, second, and then spiritual relief, third. And they peel off of you in the opposite order when you relapse. The first thing you lose is the spiritual connection, the connectedness, the, and so that's the, the total self-centeredness comes in. And uh, so, anyway, I got, the, I got start getting this. I got this vibe from this guy, right? And I kind of peeped that. I saw this, you know. So anyway, after that, then all of a sudden I start getting fucking weird, weird vibes around the fellowship. Like, this dude got paranoid that I was going to fucking, you know what I mean? That I was going to break his anonymity. That I was going to fucking, you know, break his confidentiality. And so he went around, he fucking must have told everybody that I was, I don't know, some sort of cretin or creepo or something. You know what I mean? To kind of till the soil to make everybody think, oh, anything that I say after that, I'm just trying to, you know what I mean? Cover my tracks, which I never did. And I think he ended up making an amends for it, maybe cleaning it up or something. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of, kind of weird. So, by the way, the guy that I shot was a rapist. Just so you know. He was a rapist, and, and, and he had proclivity. One of the reasons that I, you know, got the deal that I got is, is that the man had certain proclivities. He had certain proclivities that the cops don't like. Okay, shed a little light on that. I spent 15 months in the county jail. You know, it was a, it was a bad deal. You know, uh, kind of complicated. Not sure if I can really talk about it, or if I really need to talk about it, or want to talk about it. I probably might at some point. I don't know. So, uh, anyway. You know, in, in prison, forget about it. You know, prison is all about human exploitation. I mean, that, that's that's what the whole world. You know, that's the struggle right there between the right and the left. How much, how much human, how much, and what kind of human exploitation are we going to have? Really, bottom line. So, when the billionaires run things, it's off the chain to the point that they poison the whole earth. And uh, nobody in the world can get ahead. You know, so, 
You know, certain, there's certain things that you just can't fix. The elites are always going to be, you know, the, the, the intellectual elites, the, the Ivy League elites, they're always going to be in a position of power because, I mean, you know, you know, when you earn that degree, you know, it earns, you know, what, how else are we going to do it? You know what I mean? We can't lead from the bottom. You have to lead from the top. You have to have the most qualified intellectual people to run shit. Otherwise, the shit gets fucked up. It just does. But it's always good if you have some people that come from the bottom and work their way up so that they know what it's like to be on the bottom. You know what I mean? So that they have, you know, they have some sort of connectedness to what to everything that's going on. Me, personally, I think that everyone should have to spend a couple of years in the Army and a year in prison on the house. I don't know how they would work that. Either somehow work or volunteer in prison or actually be put in prison with the prisoners. You know, just so that everybody can see, you know, what what that's like. You know, and it ain't what you think it is. It's not. Prison is not what you think it is. It's not nearly as interesting, uh, you know, as you think it is. It's just not. It's boring. It's, it's, it's inane. It's stupid. You know, it's like fucking kindergarten for adults. You know, it's ridiculous. Anyway. You know, one of the really obvious things is that Vladimir Putin, you know, is running the whole fucking internet. I mean, the guy is taking over the whole internet. You can't say anything bad about Putin on the internet or your shit will fucking disappear. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how is it that... How is it that a... And I, I like the guy and everything. Uh, how is it that a Philip DeFranco video on YouTube gets more views than the President of the United States? On, on the White House channel. You know what I mean? How the fuck is that? How is it that... And I like Philip DeFranco. And he's talented. And he's great. How is it that uh, um, Jaina Marbles... She's got 16 million uh, subscribers. She's got 16 million subscribers. How is it that her videos get more views than the, than the President of the United States? And that kind of sort of tells the whole story right there. You know what I'm saying? And I like Jaina Marbles. She's talented. She's talented. She's entertaining to watch. She really is. Her and her little dogs and everything. Oh, another thing about Jaina Marbles, just so you know. A lot of these cats, these big-time YouTubers, are from New York City. Okay? So they have connections. You know, your uh, Casey Neistat and Philip DeFranco and... Uh, and even um, uh, Jana Marbles is like from New, New Jersey, you know. And then she was in L.A. for a while. But Jana Marbles has got a fucking master's degree in communications, I think, or something like that. She does. These guys, these people have they have degrees. The only one who doesn't, I, I, who I think doesn't have a degree, is uh, the Amazing Atheist. Doesn't have a degree. He's pretty. He's got a million, over a million subscribers, like 1.2 or 3 million subscribers, you know. But his stuff is pretty tight, you know. His his repartee. I don't agree with him about everything, I, you know. The thing that he's on with Trump, dude. What the hell is that? You know what I mean? Why are you defending? Why are you defending Trump? You know, the guy was talking, I mean, clearly, you know, this, you know, he wasn't joking. It wasn't, you know what I mean? The guy was describing how he used his power to, to sexually assault women. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what it is. It's not, you know, plainly on the, on the face of it. So, but he's there defending him. It's like, okay, man, you want to ride it? <laughs> you want to ride it into the dirt? I guess you got a week left and then, you know, whatever, you know, you can defend it. Go ahead, you know, knock yourself out. Whatever, whatever it takes, man. Casey Neistat, on the other hand, uh, you know, called on everybody to uh, support Hillary, right? To, to, uh, to endorse Hillary. And the following week, the guy gets a, a first-class ticket to Dubai, you know, like a $21,000 plane ride, okay, which is kind of interesting, right? And then his, you know, his uh, subscriber numbers go up and his view numbers go up tremendously after that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you know, and he lives in New York City and, you know, Trump is from New York City and Hillary's from New York City. So, you know, this, uh, New Yorkers are, you know, they're Democrats. So, you know, there are enough people living in New York City that you could get a million, just because a million people could know you just from the street. Seriously. A million, you could build a following in New York City just because you live in New York City. Whereas if you live in the sticks, it's a lot harder. So, but the whole Vladimir Putin thing, you know, you, if you're a little guy like me, you can't say nothing bad about Vladimir Putin or, or Anonymous. Anonymous, forget about it, man. You can't say nothing about Anonymous. Because they'll fucking fuck your channel up. They will. And they have. I did a thing about Anonymous about three videos ago. And my fucking and, and, and my my channel went off the rails. I got 16 down votes on that one video, you know. And, and now my now I'm not you know it's like my, I'm not getting the views and all that kind of shit because they simply said that you know the, the the anonymous brand can be co-opted by virtually anybody at any time for any reason. How do you know it's them? You don't. It could be Vladimir Putin. It could be the fucking FBI, or the CIA, or the Chinese, or the fucking you know. It could be anybody. It could be me. It could be you. It could be the you know. So how are you going to put stock in anything that they say? You know, here's a word for 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 Hillary Clinton from from anonymous. You know, how am, I, how am I supposed to put any stock in that? You know what I'm saying? It just could be any schmuck with any fucking, with any agenda whatsoever. You know? And Anonymous, you know, why don't they ever go after, I mean, Jesus Christ, if there was ever a person to go after, why don't they ever go after, you know, a billionaire? Why don't they ever go after Sheldon Adelson? Or, uh, you know, or Vladimir Putin for that matter? You know, why don't they ever go after people like that? Or do they? Maybe they do, and we just never hear about it. You know what I'm saying? They always go after, no, they always go after the fucking uh, Hillary. 
You know? It's a, it's bullshit. It's fucking complete and total bullshit. They're always going after Hillary. Why? You know? I mean, really, is Hillary all that bad? You know? She's actually kind of a goofy broad in a way. You know? She does a lot of physical humor. You know that thing where she, you know, it's, she's just, you know, she's, supposedly, she's the life of the party. What, you know, you take her to a party and she's like crazy. You know? She is. So, she's just a fun lady. But she's also a policy wonk. She knows what she's doing. It's one of those live and learn things. You can't ever know what it's like to be in office until you're there. And it's a fucking, you know, listen, man. You know, the office of the presidency, that's a meat grinder, man. That's a, that's a hard-ass job. You have to dig You have to dig down deep into parts of your soul you never knew existed to survive doing a job like that. That's a hard-ass job. That's the hardest job in the world. You know what? Actually, it's the second hardest job in the world. The first hardest job in the world is running for president. So, listen, man. It's all bullshit. You know, and, and here's the other thing about the Internet and, and YouTube and Facebook. It's pay-to-play. You ain't got no money. You can't just go in there and see, you know what I mean, and organically mix up your, you know what I mean, promote your own shit. They kind of make it hard for you to do that. You got to pay them fucking people. They know what they got, you know? They sell you on the idea that you can just go in there, you know what I mean, and start networking yourself up, you know, working, using their tool to work to work yourself up a presence. You know what I mean? But you can't really do that. You, they, want, they, they want your money. You got to pay them fucking people. It's pay to play, but, you know, whatever. It's all good, you know? So I don't think there's ever going to be any more, you know, your shit going viral. You know, somebody's out of, out of woodwork just going viral. You know, it's all totally controlled. Anyway, that's all I got. This is uh, the Invisible Man, or the anon or, or Anonymous Anonymous. Anonymous Hippopotamus. Anonymous from the Bottomus. See ya. News from the can.